haven't, haven't seen many mosquitoes till today. They're bad early, but lately they haven't been too bad. So that's a little interesting with this Y right here. I just rubbed my chin on it. I didn't realize it was a poison ivy vine. I thought it was a maple leaf. <laughs> angle it right there just in case I have to shoot back in the slough. I'll still be able to. Should be able to shoot out front just fine. How's it look from up there? I like it. I think I'm in a good height too. We'll be able to see through the timber quite a bit too. Well, it's Sunday night, as you can see, Gavin and I came out to get a stand hung tonight. And this is a tree I'd already picked out previously in this line of hardwood maples. There's a couple other locust tree mixed in, but mostly mature maple trees here. And uh, kind of a natural edge. So one thing I was just talking to Gavin about is with regards to these stand locations, you know, a lot of times it's the stand location first based on whatever type of movement factors or entry and exit route. In this particular case, I added food in this location, so it wasn't a situation where I just put a food plot in and hung a stand over it. This stand is another example of one that would be good regardless of if there's food here or not. I just had a good size opening and it was my only really open area to put food on this side of the property. So went ahead and created a new plot right here. Um, actually got a decent size, it's about 0.8, about 8 tenths of an acre. I uh, see a little bit ago even had a little bit of germination despite the fact that we're in a pretty good drought here in Iowa um, But being in the shade right here helps um, Like I said, this will be a really good spot. This is gonna make it a little bit better um, But my favorite thing about this spot is the entry and exit. So there's this slough dried up obviously now But this slough will provide really good in and out access uh, Good wind advantage all that type of stuff. So I wanted to get the stand hung my next project that I might hit before we get out of here tonight is just taking a saw and just making sure it's walkable or maybe even wide enough for the Tour V to, to roll through here because this is again the key to this spot being really good is us being able to get in and out pretty clean. Um, one other cool thing about this spot that I think is going to make it good, I, I mentioned the edge is going to give us movement uh, east and west but it kind of creates a T intersection here too because there's a, a big marsh that comes up to a point. So before I had anything here, I noticed the deer were coming around that, almost like the head of a ditch. They're coming around that marsh point and that's kind of creating that north-south movement. So we have good east-west and north-south movement plus a food plot here. Uh, this is gonna be a really cool spot and the fact it's, it's hard to find all that type of stuff and have a spot where you can get in and out, but we actually have that rare occasion uh, in this particular instance. So I'm excited about this stand. It, it looks sweet from up there, but I feel like I say that every time I climb a tree this time of year, it's just, I think it's a, a little bit of the fact that I haven't been in a tree stand for so long. So it just feels good to be back in a tree and, and everything seems like a pretty sweet setup, but I, I really am excited about this spot. We'll see if we can get some rain and get a little food in here, but regardless, I'm excited to, to get here and hunt this fall. I'm gonna grab the chainsaw and make my way back out this, uh, this slough, try to get it cleaned up a little bit, and then we'll be able to stay out of here for a while.
hoping we're gonna get out of here before we get carried away by mosquitoes tonight. But I know we tend to beat the entry and exit routes into people's heads and it kind of gets old, I'm sure. But especially when you have an option like this, it really does need to be one of the first things you consider with regards to a stand option or stand placement. Just that location just makes so much sense because of this slough right here and being able to sneak in and out. It's just low enough. It's not a real deep slough, but it's just low enough that we're going to be below um, eye level for a deer. So it's a sweet spot. Um, like I said, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, we'll throw it over to the guys. Uh, we're finally starting to get out in the bean fields and uh, try to find some velvet bucks. And the guys had a good time the other night. So we'll, uh, we'll show you some of that footage and uh, we're, we're gonna hit it hard over the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. guys today is july the 29th grant and i are making our first outing on this permission farm of ours this is the farm that eddie uh is on and uh, in the last probably week or so he's been pretty active as well as a couple of other bucks we've got uh, a short g2 10 pointer that we had last year that's just showed back up in the last week uh, and he's been pretty active as well so today's the last good day of weather that we're going to have for with the 10 days showing it's pretty rough hot weather coming in so today high was only 80 it's probably only maybe 70 degrees or so now so feels good we got a good north wind which is what we need to go and film these beans so we're actually going to split up one of us is going to go to the northeast corner and one's going to go to the northwest we don't really know eddie's kind of been on the northeast and the, and the g2 deer on the northwest so we're going to flip a coin and see who goes where uh, and get down in there it's probably almost seven o'clock so we've got to get moving here Heads for the east. Yeah. You're going west. <laughs> Alright, I'm going east. Alright, we're gonna get moving here, get back and set up. Hopefully one of these big deer is on their feet tonight. The cell cameras went off last night, like a little after seven with good deer already moving, so hopefully tonight they do the same. picture this morning actually still in daylight I think it was like around seven o'clock right here at the home camera look like he was working his way just kind of back into the timber to bed so as long as we got in clean which I think we did we kind of stayed in the low part of the field and only exposed ourselves for the last 50 yards so we've got good face cover in front of us although we're sitting a little bit closer than I probably like so if he does come out it's gonna be pretty intense because I bet we're right at about a hundred or so from where I think they feed a bunch. So we'll see what happens. It's a short, it's a short dude. Just got settled in. We were kind of creeping up over this hill where I was wanting to go. And I pop up and I see the deer, one of the deer that we were wanting to film tonight, the short tooth down. I just eased back down and got all the camera stuff ready. And when I pop back up, he just popped back in the tree line. So hopefully he pops back out. We're on the shaded side of the field, so I'm hoping that. He'll just stay on this side of the field and just pop out right here. He's, I mean, he's no more than 100 yards away probably right now, so hopefully he pops back out. I really want to be like another 100 yards up in front of us.
That's gonna be a big deer on that. I don't know, he's pretty solid. I didn't even have to put the binos on him when I first saw him. I instantly knew it was a short dude. I definitely think he's mature. Closing on, on daylight here, and then the first deer that we saw when we popped up over hill finally stepped out. It's that deer we call the short 210. He looks, he looks really good. But overall, it's been a really good sit. We started off with a solid eight pointer, and then a little while later, we had a, a really nice young deer. He's like a six by five with some splits. He's a really pretty young deer. I'm excited to see what he's what he's going to be in the next couple of years. But it's a gorgeous night to be out here. Hopefully, Jacob and Max are having some action over there. Well, overall, it was a pretty good night, at least for Gavin and I. Like you guys saw, we saw that short 210, which is definitely a deer that we wanted to put some eyes on and film. Um, he looks great. I don't know if he's on the top of the hit list or not. I mean, obviously Eddie's on the top of the hit list, but I don't know if it's a deer that we're gonna be targeting or not, but great to see him. I don't know where Eddie was tonight. I mean, I know we had pictures of him this morning at like 6.30, so yeah. you know he was right there somewhere. I don't know why he didn't come out. The mystery lives on with that deer. <laughs> this is our, is this three years now? Yeah. We've laid eyes on him just that one time, but like Grant said, the short 210, is a good looking deer. Last year was our first year of uh, pictures with him. We actually had an encounter with him, but we don't have any footage. Uh, and last year we had him on that four or five year old line. We weren't really sure. I'm kind of leaning toward him being five this year. Not sure if he's on the hit list like Grant said, but a really good looking deer and a deer that I'm sure we'll have an encounter with. He kind of displayed a lot of pretty aggressive behavior last year, even just on trail camera, you know, posturing up to other deer and whatnot. And he was super active. I mean, yeah. October, and all the way through November. So kind of excited, you know, hopefully he sticks around like he did last year and we'll continue to lay eyes on him and then see, you never know, he could jump up a couple spots on the hit list. Yeah.